Hello my friends and well welcome to Electrical Engineering Planet. In today's video we will create a circuit that is responsible for breaking an induction motor. Today we will start by one method of breaking an induction motor which is DC injection. So please consider subscribing in Electrical Engineering Planet channel to support our community. Also don't forget to share, like and let knowledge enlighten your world. Here from Electrotechnical IEC, I will start creating our power circuit. Here from power, energy sources, three phase. Let's drag and drop this three phase power. Let's now go to protection. And from protection, I will bring a circuit breaker, a three pole circuit breaker, which will be our main circuit breaker. From contactor poles, let's bring now two contactors. This is our first and main contactor, which will be used for the motor. The motor here will work as direct online, so we only need one contactor. Let's bring another contactor here. This contactor will be responsible for the breaking. This contactor could be smaller contactor, which will be used to inject a DC current for the motor while breaking to stop the motor instantaneously. Now, let's return back to protection and bring a thermal overload. This is our thermal overload. Perfect. Now let's bring our motor here from motor three phase induction or asynchronous motor. Let's drag and drop it here. And now we are ready. Let's connect first our direct online circuit. Let's zoom in a little bit and choose three power wires. And at last from the thermal overload to the three phase induction motor. So this is a very simple direct online circuit. But now we want to connect another circuit for breaking the motor, which is a DC injection circuit. Let's connect here a three phase power source to the second contactor. This is our second contactor. Now I will bring a rectifier that converts this three phase AC power to a DC power which will be used as injection for this motor so let's return back and go now to energy converters here you will find a three phase rectifier let's drag and drop it here as you can see in this library you will find a DC to DC converter rectifier single phase rectifier a rectifier in a full wave inverter three phase inverter and more but we will choose this three phase rectifier let's connect it here here from the other side i will connect a variable resistor to limit the current that is being injected to the motor while breaking so here from basic passive and active components i will choose resistors here I will bring this variable resistance or potentiometer. Let's drag and drop it here. Right click on it. From transformation, I will rotate it left. Perfect. This is our resistor now. Let's connect it here to the positive line. And let's connect it here to one of the three wires that is being connected to the motor double click now let's connect the other terminal directly to another terminal of the motor but here actually before I connect it I will bring here a normally open contact from this contactor why we will learn exactly why now let's bring it first from control and here our relay contacts normally open contact let's bring it here I will not connect it now until I bring our relay coil. 
let's connect now our circuit and now as you can see this is our power circuit let's now change this resistance i will put it here actually as 10 ohm here as you can see we can change this value this is a thousand ohm i will just make it 10 ohm and let's press ok now let's create our control circuit here from power source energy sources single phase let's bring a line and a neutral now we will start creating a very simple direct online control circuit here let's open control and from protection i will bring a single pole circuit breaker first this is our main breaker for the control circuit then i will bring a normally closed stop switch emergency switch here from switches i will bring this normally closed stop switch now let's bring a normally open contact that is related to this thermal overload let's double click on it and here as you can see i will add a normally closed contact double click on it press ok and here as you can see this is a normally closed contact from this protection thermal overload protection so let's drag and drop it here now i will bring a start push button this is our start push button let's bring our contactor coil drag and drop it here and of course i will link it to this contactor so double click here and choose kf1 so as you can see this contactor now is linked to this coil now let's make a latchet contact from relay contact normally open contact here and i will make it link it to this kf1 okay and now our circuit is ready let's now connect it And as you can see this start and normally open contact from the contactor is parallel to each other now let's connect it to our contactor and then the other terminal to the neutral and as you can see this is a very simple circuit this is a direct online circuit so if we simulate this circuit now we will see that this motor will work as direct online circuit let's see now close this circuit breaker and this circuit breaker now if we start this start push button the motor will start working with its maximum speed and as you can see this coil is working and this latchet contact is working now if we stop it the motor will stop but after a specific time because of the inertia so we will create another circuit actually we use this dc injection braking or any other type of braking to stop it simultaneously because we want this motor to stop and not working by inertia because the inertia is a very big problem actually if you have an overhead crane for example when you release your hand you want it to stop it instantaneously because the inertia is still existing the motor will not stop and will cause a big problem to us now let's create the other circuit now we will use a new switch or a new sensor this sensor is called centrifugal sensor which detects the motor when it's working and it will be activated so here from sensors speed and position we will bring this centrifugal switch this switch now if we link it to this motor when the motor start working it will be activated and when the motor stop working and stop rotating this sensor will be not activated 
Here, I want to make this sensor not to be normally closed. I want it to be normally open. So let's double click on it. And let's double click on this normally closed contact. And I will choose it normally open. Press OK. And perfect. It became normally open. But still it's not connected to this motor. Now we want to, to make it to be connected to this motor. So double click again. And now here let's choose this two arrows. This one will be activated actuator characteristics. So let's click on it. And let's choose from here this motor. As you can see this motor is not appearing here. I don't know actually why. This is a problem in this version. So this one will not be linked to this motor. We have to choose another motor. The motor which has six ends. Which can be connected as a star or delta. So let's delete this one. And I will choose the other motor. Here from power. I will choose motor. And this motor is a three phase asynchronous motor. Let's bring this one with six connectors. Let's bring it here. And let's connect it to our circuit. And I will connect those ends as a store. So every two ends will be connected together. Perfect. Now, if we return back to this sensor, double click on it. Choose this two arrows and choose activation. We will find our motor now. Press OK and perfect. Now as you can see, if this motor starts to be rotate, this switch will be activated. And when this motor is stopped, this sensor will be stopped. So let's simulate it now. Now if we connect our circuit still it's open when i start our motor when the motor starts rotating this will be closed when i stop this motor now the motor when it reaches to zero rpm this sensor will be open so it will sense when the motor is fully stopped and when the motor starts working now let's connect it to our circuit now let's bring another coil of a contactor which is K2 here from contactor coils bring another coil of a contactor which is called KF2 let's link it here so here I will choose KF2 perfect also this normally open power contact I will double click on it and I will choose it KF2 so this coil is linked to this contactor and this point. Why we have this normally open power contact? Because when the motor is working, we want to be ensured that this contactor is not working it and, and it will never be working. But I am afraid of that the power comes and will be linked to this rectifier which will affect on it. So I want when this contactor is not working to open or isolate this circuit from the power which is coming from KF1 so want a complete isolation while this KF1 is working to isolate this rectifier from the main power source also we want to make an interlock between KF1 and KF2 because we want to ensure that KF1 and KF2 will never work at the same time because this will cause a short circuit we have two sources now, AC and DC, and this will make a huge short circuit. So let's now delete this wire and let's bring now normally open or normally closed contact here from K2 and here normally closed contact from K1. Here from relay contacts, let's bring two normally closed contact. Here I will connect it to KF2. And the other contact will be connected to KF1. Press OK. And now we are good to go. Let's connect our circuit again here. And let's connect the new circuit. 
and our circuit now is ready perfect now let's simulate our circuit let's now close the circuit breaker and this circuit breaker as you can see here the motor is not working when I press on the start push button the motor will start working and KF1 will work and KF1 will work this centrifugal switch will also work because it's linked to the rotor of the motor now what if I want to stop the motor when I stop the motor now this contactor will not be working this normally closed contact from KF1 will return back to its primary status it will be closed and this centrifugal switch is still closed because of the motor the motor is still working by inertia so this power circuit will be working now when I stop the motor this contactor will be open and actually this will make this KF1 to be returned back to be closed so when I stop now this motor the contactor KF1 will be stopped so this open contact will be returned back to be normally closed and still this centrifugal switch is working because the motor is still rotating by inertia so now this KF2 will be activating which will make an injection of a DC to stop the motor when the motor is stopped this centrifugal switch will be open to open the circuit now let's see how it will work so now I have closed or stopped the motor this KF2 now is working and it will make this motor to stop faster when it stopped it will open this MA1 in the next video we will learn how to stop the motor by plugging method so please consider subscribing in electrical engineering planet channel to support our community also don't forget to share like and let knowledge enlighten your world thanks for watching